Hello and uh, welcome to a drawing adventure for Twitch. It's been a little while since I've been online and I wanted to go ahead and jump back into it. Let's see, turn the volume down on that one. So, um, I need to do some drawing because I'm going to be doing some live streaming on World Anvil's site on Wednesday, doing some sculpting of a head. Uh, this is the head I'm going to be sculpting on. This is, I believe, a fox head uh, made by a taxidermy shop, a gray fox, and so I'm going to be taking this and then actually uh, sculpting on top of it. So I want to kind of get some ideas out and think through what I want this critter to be. So I'm just going to jump into my sketchbook and, and start doodling out some ideas. I understand. Alright, so basically I don't want this to look like a fox at all. I want it to kind of have a completely different look and feel than what it currently has. But to do this, I want to go ahead and get the overall shape down that I'm going to be working with. I tend to start working in circles, looking at the overall form that is this styrofoam base. Knowing the eye is going to go here, curving this back down. And so that gives me the foundation of what I want to work with for the initial sketches. I'll go ahead and lay this down on the side. So, let's see. Do I want to give it antlers? Do I want to give it, make it more aquatic? I'm not really sure. It's got a very narrow face going at it straight down. Do I want to play on that and keep it narrow? And sometimes I like to chop things off, like cutting it off at the front of the face. I think, let's see about, let's see about bringing this up even more. I always like to add horns onto things. Let's at least go with this. And, and with this, I'm using my magic pencil plus four monster making. I'm just gonna start doing some ideas around. And this very possibly won't be what it ends up looking like. But I need to go ahead and figure out what I'm going to be creating because I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to have to make the eyes for it for the sculpting because I like to work it where that when I'm doing the sculpting, I have the eyes in all along the entire sculpting session just so that I can see how it's going to, see how it's going to look back at me. Let's see. And then, I think I want to give it a big underbite. I'll probably do a handful of these till I get it exactly how I want it to be. And let's see, all right. I was just double checking my Twitch to make sure that it is indeed streaming and that it's coming in okay. So, let me ping. So, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and put three eyes in here. Let's go ahead and kind of make these rounded. This underbite. And let's go ahead and even bring this into like some sort of like neck like goozle type thing. Today's stream is really about testing the connection, making sure that things are kind of moving and flowing in properly, and then my stream settings are set up good, that everything's kind of flowing all right. Probably should have scheduled somebody to, to test it while I was going. Let me see if I can... Uh, let's see. Go ahead and do some lines down here. 
I think I'll go ahead and start building up a brow over top of this because whenever I start insetting eyes, I like to bulk it up quite a bit. And then let's go ahead and bring this back. And so I'm going to bring this down. I'm going to kind of give it like a, a fin off the back, much like a lot of uh, a lot of dinosaurs tend to have. And already, I think, because I like having horns and things so much, I'm already digging how this is looking now. With this, I wonder what sort of eye pupils I should give it. Should I make it more uh, amphibious? Should I do it more where it's a uh, where it's got like the dragon reptilian slits, or even more more uh, mammal like? I'm gonna do loose lines in here for most of this light line since I'm using this this number two pencils, and then after that I'll come back with some of the heavier weight, one of the softer leads, and then I'll really go in and start putting details in. And then with this, do I want to I want to add little splotchy colors that I can then carry throughout? One of the things that I want to do since I'm going to be sculpting this on somebody else's, um, uh, uh, with somebody else's uh, stream, I want to make sure that I show off a bunch of different sculpting techniques. Um, Um, and so I want to make sure I uh, show different sculpting te techniques and textures to really kind of get that across. Um, Woohoo! Thank you for the uh, the follow. That was gigantic. I don't know. Uh, it showed up in my window. Huge. Let me shrink that thing down. It's been a while since I streamed on here, so all my stuff pops up all kind of funny. All right. Hello, everybody that has jumped into the chat. Uh, feel free to say hello and send send your regards. So you can see the sculptures that I've got kind of in the window, things that I've done in the past. So now I'm just kind of drawing out these concepts of what I think I want this to be. Um, cool. So uh, thank you, Isaac, who has tuned in into my Discord, our Discord, to give me some some feedback and let me know that things are moving along smoothly. Anybody in the chat? Have any uh, suggestions on what type of pupils you'd like it to be? Um, either like more slits, like a like a dragon, or more amphibious, where it's got kind of an oblong uh, shape to it. And so, like I was saying, Wednesday night at 9:30 Eastern, I will actually be streaming the sculpting of this creature on World Anvil's site. They have this thing going on right now, a uh, the World Ember, which is a a writing. Uh, competition to try and prompt people to, to do more world building and I'm actually going to be the final judge of the uh, species section they're going to narrow it down to the top 10 species the community is and then I'm going to actually get to be the one that judges which one I think is the best and they're going to get my sculpture and also my creature collection book and a couple other things so it's pretty awesome that they asked me to uh, to be a judge so I thought it'd be fun to go ahead and do some streaming of this. Okay, I'm gonna put down this soft pencil, or this hard pencil. I'm gonna grab a my fancy Blackwing pencil, see if I can figure out where I put my pencil sharpener, because I obviously did not prepare today. Pencil sharpener, where have you gone? I have a couple of pencil sharpeners where the blades have just kind of gone a little bit dull, and they're not as fun to work with. Like that one, why aren't you, you're not even going in. All right, I'm gonna first start out with, I always tend to start out on the horn. I didn't even check, does anybody, anybody that's watching, are the tunes coming through to you guys or are they just piping into my headphones? As if all of a sudden I just start dancing and acting all crazy, that would, uh, that would explain why. going to add a little bit of shading as the two different textures is like the the uh, texture of the the fleshy part goes over the bony part of the of the horn 
I just got some Copic markers the, a couple weeks ago. I'd never used them before. And man, I was excited about them. I'm hoping that I got a, a few more colors as gifts um, for, for Christmas from, from some family. Ooh, that pencil sharpener just totally busted that piece of lead off. One of the things that I love about these black wings is how soft they are and how much just by going on lightly I can start to get a lot of a uh, lot of soft texture and color and then by bearing down you really get those nice nice dark lines <laughs> oh no do you have the flu Isaac <laughs> thank you yes of course what a cool dragon I have this running uh, running gag at cons that not that my most of my creatures just don't resemble they're they're not dragons but a lot of people seem to think they are which is okay oh man i'm sorry isaac i'm sorry that you've got the crud i hope it leaves your systems quickly although i i think i probably should figure out how to get some some tunes back on the show cuz I think it tends to kill, like, help with some of like the dead time and when when I'm just not chatting and talking. Although I tend to run my mouth pretty good while I'm streaming. And it has been ages since I've done the regular streams, but I really want to get back to it. I need to try and figure out for the new year how to juggle that between day job, art that I need to create, and then the RPG content that we're developing. Um, what all we want to stream as a as personally than also as a uh, as a company what things we'd want to share and especially it's kind of a lot of people don't have a whole lot of insight into the the world building side of things and and what we put into developing some of the stuff and that might be fun to share with folks Anybody got anything exciting going on this afternoon or whatever time it might be in your neck of the woods? I decided I want to give this guy a little little tooth coming up out of this uh, this underbite. I don't usually start thinking about what region of Revelo they're from or anything like that until until the, the colors start going on when I, when I'm paint, uh, painting them. Okay, since there was no feedback in the chat, I'm going to give it some of the more amphibious eyes, where I start out smaller, go to like a wider, rounded shape on the outside. For some reason, uh, Logitech did not want to work today in allowing me to uh, zoom in at all, or even stop the uh, the autofocus thing that's that may be happening. And I want to go ahead and start putting in some additional textures in here. So. Uh, so that I can show off how to get some of those textures when I sculpt it. Because so far I'm kind of digging this one, especially, you know, the idea of throwing six eyes onto this onto this critter. I think that'll be fun during the sculpting. I think showing how to add additional elements here, I think will be good. Just doing a little bit of, a little bit of shade shade there. Clean up this line just a little bit, and then once it's down there, I'm gonna add some little texture lines underneath. And and this sketchbook is starting to get filled up with with lots of creatures that were some of the uh, some of the illustrations that I, I did to digitally color some of them. If you're not familiar with all of my weird fantasy creatures, you can check them out on CreatureCuration.com. We're also developing RPG content for 5e as well as for Fate. In collaboration with Norse Foundry, who makes awesome components for games, metal dice, metal coins. Also publishing my art book and our RPG stuff.
Anybody have any thoughts on what colors this this critter should be once it starts getting sculpted and painted? Ooh, that's something I need to do. So when I paint this on the sculptor sculpture, I will will be using all Reaper miniature paints. So I'll need to check and see what colors I have. I do have a lot of uh, new colors that I picked up when I was at uh, PAX Unplugged because it was awesome seeing Reaper there. He's starting to come together okay. Some more shading up above the uh, the brow, the kind of lumpy brow locking his eyes in. And this is just a concept drawing since I'm sculpting this for myself. If things change when I'm sculpting it from the original drawing, it doesn't really matter. It's not a big deal. But I will probably have this up in the window when I go to uh, make with the the sculpting on Wednesday night. I'll have this uh, so people can see it in the browser window and see how it kind of comes together. And with that, I'll probably have the camera aimed this way and spin it around and sculpt it as I'm doing it. I'll probably need to get a second sculpture to work on because sometimes when I'm working on a piece, I'll want to have two things that I'm sculpting on at once just so I can really kind of go back and forth between the two. Start bearing down on the pencil just a little bit to give it some extra weight as we go around the outside of it. So OBS and the new Mac software does not like to play well together. It took me a few minutes today to figure out that I had to jump into command line to allow it to pick up both my cameras and my microphone. And I have to pop that open every time I want to run OBS, which was good times. I'm glad I didn't have anything scheduled and I was just kind of jumping into play because um, if I had it already scheduled I would have been in trouble and started like sweating nervously and been like what is going on here let's give it a that underbite a little bit give it some personality although I don't think this will be an intelligent species I mean we've got so many intelligent species in Revelo right now we need some that are just like okay this is an animal this is a monster -y type critter Isaac has already written up so many, started doing all the development of all, so many playable species that uh, we just, if we add more to it, we're going to have a book that's, that's all it is. Let's go ahead and do some lines off the lips. You're getting floating forest vibe from this one? Hmm, perhaps. I do need something that's kind of like a guard dog type creature, but this is a little bit small in the grand scheme of things. But I could see this hanging out on the bottom floor of the forest, or maybe even figure out how to make it crawling around in the, in the roots below. line is not sharp like I want it to be. Need to get a file. Let's see. There we go. That's a little better. Trying to get this to a nice can climb trees even. Yeah, we could definitely do that. Give it some good like climbing claws. Kind of like give it some Wookiee like climbing claws. So I think this like kind of pouch might puff up and shrink down. Might need to be a slightly separate color. Then with weird even maybe maybe these are even more 
blown out. The things that I'm drawing now, maybe they don't recede like I'm drawing it. Maybe they pop out like blistery. I could see these definitely being more like lizard-like climbing trees and eating birds and things like that. Maybe it's a different strain of the same species that evolved differently that lived down below in the roots. So for those of you that are, uh, um, streams going framey for you? Huh. Well, let's see. My audio was going a little choppy for me too, so let me see what happens when I do this. Hopefully it will not break everything. All right, let's see, let's see, let's see. I just turned Wi-Fi off and just jumped it directly to the, uh, the ethernet. Hopefully that'll pick things up a little bit. Let me know if it picks up at all now that I've swapped that over. And I'll even stop the music, so that'll be a little less. Oh yeah, the salts could totally have a, a more aquatic-based version of it. Um, so for anybody that's watching, um, the floating forest is a, a uh, awesome. Thanks, Isaac, for letting me know, and thank you uh, for saying me too. Uh, so the floating forest is three tiers of regions, with the roots dangling down below the the surface level, and then the the trees up above in the treetops, so we've got lots of creatures that can, can fill that space. That pencil sharpener just totally wrecked this pencil. I don't know what is going on. I need to figure out where I put I had this blue pencil sharpener that was, that was working awesome. Come on, be sweet to me. Don't waste this pencil. Damn. Excellent. Glad that's better. I need to remember to turn the Wi-Fi off. See, I have to turn the Wi-Fi on to allow certain things to access my computer at home, but if it defaults to that, that's just not cool. And maybe it was also the audio as well. So, Hey, thank you for the follow. Much appreciated. I'm sorry that I could not read, um, read the name, but thank you for joining on our quest. So if this thing lives in the trees of the floating forest, it's going to have primarily greens and colors, maybe some, some hints of red, especially during, maybe as color changes a little bit um, during the, the fall seasons as the, 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 as the leaves change. Eats large insects, birds, small, small, small birds, maybe even small rodents as well. Perhaps they have some sort of a poisonous salivations. Patchy feathers that change the color of season. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, I could see that. Maybe they have like weird feathers that are just kind of like under the arms so that they can glide, but they can't really fly. I'm gonna have to go back through these net through the uh, through the the chat and make sure I remember all this stuff because usually I don't. So if you look at my Twitch channel, it says days and stuff that I stream. That is completely outdated, and uh, but that will be updated after the beginning of the new year, maybe even beforehand, once I try and iron down when I want to do the streaming and what all I will be what all I will be, be doing. I'd like to really work on some of my my skills that I'm that are not as strong as others, and this might be a good way to make sure I'm doing it. Thank you very much. 
How are things over in Hong Kong? Make sure to check out uh, more of my critters. Uh, let's see. Earlier this year, I put out my first uh, creature collection book. And there's a bunch of them over on the Creature Curation website that you can check out. That has some more details and information on those, those critters. Now, if I want this to have these these kind of boil type things that I put on it, but I kind of have them a little bit over the over the brow, so I thought I might as well go ahead and throw some, bring them into some other parts, like down on 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 the jaw. Let's start doing some of this. Now, one thing that I always forget. Um, yes, we do. We do stream RPG content. I need to get better at that. I need to get a piece of paper that I can use to put under my hand. There we go. I always forget that my my oily hands will start to smudge the drawings as I, as I go on, especially with these uh, black wing pencils. So this guy is going to, uh, I think once we finish this concept, I think what I'll do is I will unwrap another um, styrofoam head and work on some concepts for that one, just so that I can have some ideas down for Wednesday, because I'm, I'm digging how this one's looking. I've done a couple other sketches uh, when I wasn't streaming of some ideas for, for this guy, but I think this one's, this one's uh, got me. I think this, I think this is the direction it's gonna, gonna go, or at least some slight variation of it. So once this drawing's done, I'll break out another styro piece of styrofoam that I have behind me that's uh, meant for a bear, I think a brown bear, black bear, so it's gonna be a slightly bigger piece of foam. And I think maybe, just maybe, I should do a version of the Paris that lives in the floating forest, maybe. Maybe we'll see where the see where the drawings take us, and if anybody out in the uh, out in the chat wants to add in any suggestions, maybe I'll throw some of those into the sketching as well. So Isaac, how long have you had the sick? I hope it is not too long. I'm gonna start the tunes again. If it starts to get choppy, let me know and I'll stop it. I'm hoping that it was just uh, the Wi-Fi versus the uh, versus the Ethernet. Excellent. I am a, uh, I'm a big fan of, uh, of all sorts of creatures. I mean, playing so much Dungeons and Dragons growing up, that was uh, such a big influence on, on the, the love of weird creatures and the idea of throwing things into games that other people had never experienced um, and keeping the, my friends from being familiar with what it is that was going in has been a huge, uh, huge uh, impact on, on what I create. What sort of monsters uh, and creatures did you like growing up? All right, I like where this guy's going. Gonna tighten this line up a little bit. And then, so I tend to do, um, been sick for about three or four days. Oh yeah, time is relevant. Fever dreams are great for creative writing. Excellent. Man, I hope you get better soon. Being sick is the worst. My daughter's been home sick for 
since last she missed school Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and today. Just cannot seem to shake it. So thinking about lizards and things like that, and a lot of times they have a underbelly that is uh, that has like that softer, more scaly texture. So I'm gonna kind of factor that in, and I tend to work that into a lot of the the reptilian type creatures that I do anyway. So I'm gonna see how that works out. Let's bring this down. I'm just gonna kind of follow these, and know that it's gonna kind of follow the contours here and going along here. I'll probably draw that in with like a sharpie when I go to sculpt it on Wednesday night, and that is uh, 9:30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time that that'll be streaming and that'll be on World Anvil's channel. Don't forget to put paper under your hand. It's nice to do a little little drawing on stream so things that things that I'll probably end up adding to my stream lineup if, if things work out there will be drawing days there will be sculpting days there will be painting days and then maybe some world building days Isaac what do you think about that we could do um, people in in window bouncing ideas back and forth I'm gonna bring some lines up off here I like making sure that the outside lines are slightly heavier and thicker Growing up on a whole bunch of comic books, I like making stuff in the foreground have even thicker lines. I like some kind of weird looking creatures that have their own characteristics. Excellent, as do I. Excellent, uh, well, you could hop on Discord and I could pipe you into the stream. I'm not quite sure how to do that. just because I have not done it before. I think we should do some testing of that and uh, and see how that works, just so I don't mess up my audio settings before Wednesday night. But after Wednesday, we should definitely, we should give that a go. Because today's plan was to try and get everything set up and working so that Wednesday's... Cool, excellent. Yeah, we will totally figure that out. Oh, and uh, uh, no, no worries about the the English interpretation. I think I think that totally came through. I like unique uh, creatures as well, stuff that def that doesn't necessarily look like everything else, but has a sense of f familiarity to it. Just start drawing some some lines up here some real simple ones knowing that this will change a little bit a lot of times when I'm sculpting and I uh, do want to do lines like that I'll get a piece of dental floss and press it into the sculpting so it'll get a nice straight clean line and we'll do some some other kind of scaly type lines here I know Isaac you're about to call it a dragon go. Now I'm going to just add a little bit of shading in there where the two textures are going to kind of connect and make sure that they're not, uh, they're not, uh, so that you can separate between the two. What I need to do is I need to turn this desk around so that 
my legs actually go under it properly so that my posture can get better while I'm sitting and doodling. And maybe change the uh, where my computer sits so that you're not just staring at the back of my head the entire time. That would probably be a good one. Set that right there. Yeah, that'll definitely be better. I just left my computer where I have it for working on day job stuff. But that definitely needs to be addressed. So do you think before I move on to the next drawing, do you think I should throw a little bit of, just a little bit of splat, one splash of color, like a Copic blue into here, to see what it looks like? So I should probably photograph it before I do that. Just in case I completely royally mess it up. So I haven't quite decided if I'm going to make those. Yeah, you want to see it in color? Okay. I'll throw a little splash of color in there then. So I, I got I picked up two Copic markers. One's a blue and one's brown. And the brown is darker than I thought it was going to be. I want it to be a little bit lighter. Um, so hopefully I'll get a lighter one. If not, I'll pick one up after, after Christmas. But I knew that that was something that some relatives may be picking up for me. So I didn't want to go and... Uh, start dropping money on, on markers if I'm going to be getting some as gifts. Feeling pretty good about this guy. I think this will be fun to sculpt. I also don't think it will be terribly long to sculpt. I'm going to have to go ahead and cut some pieces out ahead of time to have those ready for Wednesday night. I'm also excited about the idea of this going to uh, someone's home that, that writes the, the best species uh, piece for the World Anvil uh, competition. I think that's going to be pretty fun. All right. Let me grab, where'd that marker go? No, I just, oh, here we go. It's right next to me. So I'm going to use this, this Copic blue. Actually, let me take a pop a picture of this real quick just so that I can use it if I need to doesn't have to be a great picture since I will be redrawing or sculpting that later all right so let's see you think so which which part do you think is the uh, the Drake influence Totally see us uh, influencing each other's work very easily over time. For anybody that's uh, watching, Carrie Drake is doing all the illustration work for the RPG module content that we're working for my, for the the Revelo stuff. Just gonna put a little bit of blue in the eyes. Like this jump out just a little bit. Now when going over top of the, the pencil lines, it kind of uh, muddies it up just a little bit, but not too much. I'm going to pull just a little bit in where some of the other lines are. Now when I was in college many, 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 many eons ago, we had marker classes, and wow, did I hate marker rendering. But something about it now, it's a little bit different because I'm not trying to make something look completely realistic using markers. Um, I'm just using it for splashes of color and 
adding a little more depth and hints to it, but I really like doing it. Quickly adds a, more to the illustration with a lot more control than like when I add watercolor to it and I can do it directly on the, the sketch paper that I've already got going. Ah, yes, a bit grittier, I can totally see that. Sometime I should show you the, the sketchbooks where all the where all the different creatures have originated from. I've got them uh, numbered one through, uh, I think I just opened, started on number five. So, some of them are creatures from Revelo, some of them are just random critters that I just drew that didn't make it into anything, but this is my bigger sketchbook that I'm trying to do some larger images in, but this one's kind of a pain to, to travel around with. Like I wouldn't want to keep this big sketchbook in my bag. Yeah, I can see. Uh, I like how this is coming in. I wish I could zoom in a little bit, just so that I could show this to you a little bit better. Let me see if I can uh, see if somehow the application is allowing me to do it now. That was Logitech. No, it will not let me change the settings at all. It's pretty crazy. It's just locked up. Okay. Uh, I wish I had another color to throw in here into the right down here into into the into the the pouch that's okay i know that'll end up being a slightly different coloration than the rest of it when it actually goes to color Can you all tell the, can you see the color going in okay? Again, this is just giving subtle hints of, of color, adding a little more definition to the, to the shape a little bit, going back over some of the areas that, where there was some shading already. One thing I haven't quite figured out with the Copic markers is whether or not I should spray the drawing before I start adding marker to it. Because every now and again I can tell where it's like smearing some of the some of the lead of the pencil. Or do I just want it? Do I want it to pull that that pencil lead? Uh, I'm sure it's diluting the color and affecting that in at least a little bit. But I don't know if it's bad for the marker or not. Go. 
know. Just adding a couple little little hints there. Alright, I think that is as far as I want to take that guy. Lid, where did I put you? Oh, here you are. I will try and lift it up to the screen in just a second, and then I'll go grab the other the other head. I, I'm I'm digging how that's looking. I think that's gonna I think that's gonna look pretty pretty cool. Oh yeah, that I will definitely go. Uh, I don't think I'll I'll go blues for for where we're going with the location. Although I do tend to go blues a lot. Let's see. Let's see if I can reverse this camera. It's moving a little bit slower. There we go. Oh, whoa. There we go. So that is the uh, finished concept drawing. I'll hold it there for just a minute or two. Uh, yeah, I guess you're right. You're totally right. But I tend to paint too many things blue. Um, I'll be right back. All right. So new piece of styrofoam. Let's see. I don't know where I put my pocket knife after packs unplugged. Should be punching myself in the face with that one. Um, all right. So we've got a new giant head coming at us. It's got some styrofoam dust on it. Let's see what happens when I drop him down into the camera view. Yeah, this guy's much bigger. Oh yeah, they could totally be colored up like tropical birds. I like that idea. I dig that. So, let's see. This you can see that this is definitely a a, a brown bear head as the foundation. So I just kind of want to sit back and take a look at it for a minute and think about what I want to do with this. I mean, my my natural instinct would be to uh, do something kind of like an owl bear, like a creature that I just recently did, just before Pax Unplugged, but make this one from the floating forest region. But I'm not sure. So that being said, so I think just to get some ideas out, I'm going to keep it on this page, um, so that people that are just now tuning in can see what I've sketched already, and then I'm going to just kind of do some rough thumbnail ideas. Uh, basically getting the shape of this creature using the the foundation of the uh, of the styrofoam of the bear shape I tend to start with like circular shapes and I think that's mostly it looking at it it's got more here coming down Pretty okay. Uh, it's usually right here if we're keeping the eye hole where the eye hole is, but that totally doesn't need to be there. So let's do another one. I'm just going to put a couple of rough shapes down just so that if all of a sudden I'm sketching and I'm like, oh gosh, I hate this direction, let's, let's switch it up. We can easily do that. Knowing that it's got the neck and then the chest area. And then let me look at it upside down as well, just in case I see something there. But I'm no, definitely not seeing some, anything that way. A lot of times that'll work okay when you're doing like a, uh, when you're using something like a deer head or something like that. You can easily get like a crazy weird looking rhinoceros style thing. Okay, are you going to stay there, Mr. Bear? There you go. So I want to try and go in a completely different direction than this guy, especially if I'm sculpting both of them on Wednesday's stream, because I'll probably make a lot of progress on this guy, but then I'll, I'll probably need to switch over to that to let things dry up a little bit. So I want to show different sculpting techniques. I want to show different textures, um, and maybe even show different regions that they are f that this is from. I think possibly. Like, I'm kind of seeing these big horns coming off of it. That'd be a, a fair amount of extra work 
that I'd have to do ahead of time to prep for it, like getting the, the structural integrity ready for that. Because I like to do the wire piece, and I also like to build it out with like a, a rigid board. And hang on, let me respond. All right, so let's start with, let's first start with some, some crazy horns on this one and see where it takes us. If anybody has any, any requests, let me know. So if we did some crazy horns there, actually I don't think my hand's going to be in that one, so it should be okay. Maybe if we made it more dog-like in the face with more of a, a rounded, uh, puffed-up muscular muscles around the around the around the uh, the the muzzle. And then maybe across the front, it has like four eyes going that way. So a lot of times I like to have more than just two eyes. Um, I think part of it is like when I was a kid, a lot of people called me four eyes because of the glasses. So I like things that have more than two eyes. So I'm going to bring this down. Let's think about this one being a textured with fur, as since that one's so reptilian. I'm trying to give this one a whole lot of personality, um, just through the overall shapes being a little more wavy and having, having more movement to them. Of course, the eyes will have to be more more mammal-like with this one as well, instead of being the more amphibious. Okay, and then maybe these live on because of the horns. It's making me think of uh, Perilous Peaks, Icy Divide. I'm thinking Perilous Peaks, maybe these are more sheep-like, like climbing on cliffs and stuff. That's what the, the horns made me think of. So then do I wanna do I wanna do something crazy like give them like almost like camel humps, like small humps for retaining water? Especially at well wouldn't necessarily need that, but maybe they could retain something else. Parts of it are starting to remind me a little bit of a creature already in Revelo, uh, 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 that are uh, carnivorous mountain goats. Yes, uh, I can totally see that. Um, the the uh, Clarsid are. But nothing will live on top of these. Ooh, storing oxygen, that's cool. I like that, and then kind of puff up, get a little bit bigger, and then go down a little bit depending on their size. Okay. So I got the roughs of that in. I'll come in with some tighter pencils or some of the the uh, the black wing pencil in just a few minutes. Now let's try. Let's see. Actually, let's finish that out. Then we'll go a completely different direction with the other one. Let's go ahead and get rid of some of these extra lines. Clean this up just a little bit. Make it a little easier to see what's going on. And do I need to sharpen you just a little bit? Hopefully it will retain the uh, the doublest flotation device. <laughs> I like that. In case of emergency, please put this creature underneath of you.
I'm very excited about sculpting on Wednesday. It feels like it's been a, a, a little while since doing all the sculpting. There's been so much design work that's needed to get done for all the uh, cartography stuff and all the, the, the conventions and everything. It's going to be nice to, to make, make with the creatures. And if you're uh, watching and want to see these guys get sculpted, make sure to uh, subscribe to World Anvil's Twitch channel or tune in there Wednesday night. I'll, I need to figure out if there's a way to uh, to have it uh, post on on my Twitch stream as well, but I know I'll be streaming directly uh, to theirs. shading here. Since these are much smaller concept sketches, um, this may be all we stick with. I don't know. They were originally just going to be thumbnails, but I'm digging how this one's looking so far. It's crazy because a lot of times I end up going with the first thing that I draw, which I know a lot of folks say not to do and to keep testing and drawing things and doing things over and over again, but I don't know. I like to keep keep moving forward. So I'm going to work on these horns, and I don't know how I'd want to make these horns. So this is a pretty big guy, right? So I'd probably make them separately and then affix them in using, like, dowel rods and putting them straight into the, uh, into the styrofoam and then sculpting on top of those using the magic sculpt to completely anchor it in. Because I don't think the armature wire is going to give it the stability that I want especially uh, if something happens in shipping or like going to a show something accidentally bonks it or a, you know something at a convention and a uh, exhibit company knocks your walls over or something I want to make sure that uh, uh, that I reinforce and completely make it structurally sound so if this is the direction I want to go I should probably go ahead and start building out the foundation for that tonight or tomorrow night. Probably tonight. Tomorrow night we have our, our weekly company recap. Something loud just happened on the trains. In the, behind my house is a big, uh, uh, it's not a train yard, but the train line. And every now and again they stop and move things. And they make big noises. So they look so sweet to be... Oh, damn. I did not draw in ears. I do not like that, because the ears have to be here. They have to be able to hear things. They go on top of the horns. Do they go way down low? No, I think they're going to have to go on top. Yeah, I think that could be worked out in the sculpting time. Just need to make sure to factor that in. Like looking at the head of this guy, if the horns are coming off here and curling up, then the ears could go kind of back like that. Yeah, I think that would work. Anybody watching like to uh, draw or sculpt their own creatures or make up creatures for games? We're behind sweeping down. 
could do that. I just want to make sure that they can like perk up to here or whatever. Doing a little shading underneath the jawline to what would go in the back. So I think with this, I'd probably figure out how to layer some colors so it's not just all one one color of, of creature. Um, maybe even like layering it almost like Neapolitan style, not the color palette, but like color on top, another color, another color, kind of like where I'm drawing this line here, but that's all like fur going down. Maybe even bring it in up here. Do that and see what happens. Almost like skunk like stripes coming down their sides. For everybody that's tuning in today, thank you for tuning in. It has been quite a while since I've done the streaming and it's it's nice to be back at it for a bit. So on top, maybe even maybe even make the mountains that come up on top that hold the oxygen have slightly different colors, almost like ice caps. I think that's a pretty good rough sketch concept for for that critter. I'll throw a little little bit of blue in there just to just to make him pop out just a little bit. I'll bring him up up close and personal real quick before I get into that. Okay, let's see if I can slow slow. There we go. Tilt it back. Nope, wrong way. There we go. So that's kind of what I'm thinking for this one. And then for anybody else that wasn't watching earlier, this is the uh, first creature that uh, that I've worked on today. If I can angle my sketch pad right. There we go. Let's do a little bit of blue on this guy. Just to give him a little splash of color. Everybody likes a little splash of color. I actually do like a whole lot of blue in this section where I just to completely offset that color there. And the cheek here, a little bit in the jawline. <laughs> yep. Did you just did you just Bob Ross icon me or emoji me? I can't tell who that is. Happy little bits of color. Can do a little bit up along the horn. a little bit down all the way into the tip of the horn a 
lid for this pencil. Excellent. The nice soothing sounds of Bob Ross. All right, here we go. Let's bring this up into up into view. It's just a little 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 splash of color, so that you can see how he looks like that. Do I know the mist? No, I have not seen that. I'll write that down though, so that I can take a look that up. I'll have to I'll have to check it out. Okay, this creature. Anybody have anything that they want to see added to it? I'm going to use that same styrofoam base of the brown bear, but I'm going to take it in a different direction than this guy here. So let's see, this guy might be um, Perilous Peaks, probably. We're going to say Oxygen Reserves. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead, at least for now, I'm going to look at possibly doing it more like the uh, variation of uh, my one of my other very recent sculptures, something that would live in the uh, floating forest on the ground floor, kind of like an owlbear almost. It's actually in the rotating available now pieces something similar in many ways to that but slightly different because it's from a, a different region it would have the big it would have horns coming off of it because they are evolved from a similar species but i think i'll or they, they evolved from the same thing do some down along here i'm gonna let that pop back into the rotation again so i can see it see if there's anything else any other elements that i want to bring into it So it's got some things going along around here. Yeah, I think this one should be, this one would have lots of different colors as well and be a little more um, feather-like perhaps. So this I would end up chopping off the front snout, cutting it off, and then bringing it down adding this into it so I think I want to add a little bit there I do like adding horns into things let's give it a little bit on the beak one one little one on the beak as well And the eye on this, though, has the round pupil, is going to be much more uh, bird-like. So it would have like a solid line color around it and a solid here, but it would be like bright colored. Brightly colored. Let's get this pencil. Let's just jump in. Let's start making, making the heavy lines. So this is all like that little bump right there on on the on the beak is just going to be part of like the overall bone structure. And then the the fur or the feathers that are going around it are going to come up over the bone of the beak. And then the same uh, structure that the uh, the beak is made out of, the horns are made out of that same same bone material. I even think that these are going to we're going to throw some some teeth into these beaks because they do they are more of a carnivorous of sorts. Go ahead and throw a little bit of shading in here, just to separate the two um, the two textures. A little more line weight here. I 
think after I'm done doing the sketch, this is going to be it for today. Um, it was good getting back into things and testing out the settings and making sure stuff was working okay. So if you have any questions or suggestions or thoughts between now and when this, uh, this sketch is done, feel free to, to jump in and, and throw it into the chat. Sharpen this pencil up a little bit. All right. I'm going to go ahead and throw a little bit of shading in here. this bird eye in here. Ooh. It looks so happy, like he's gonna bite your head off. So ready, so ready to eat. So the lines that I'm putting in now, I was seeing as being representative of different colors of, of fur or feathers. Not quite certain what texture material they would, these guys would be covered in. What if on the front it almost uh looks like that color looks more skull-like from the front. Scary. All right, making these happy wiggly lines. Gonna make some interesting scales. Since the other, like since this, this big guy is kind of, has a little bit of that texture going on, I want it to be, I want to veer, stay away from the, uh, the, the kind of more reptilian side of things. But I tend to, I tend to go scales on a lot of things, so. Let's see what happens when I start. Yeah, because when I start, like, doing, like, fur-type lines, it doesn't look as uh, scary-looking or creepy as I think it should be. Let's erase some of these lines in here, and then maybe, maybe we'll be able to throw some texture up in there. Or, ooh, here's some creepy stuff. What if up here and underneath is, like, an overlying fur or feather and then under here all we're seeing is musculature now we're getting into some creep show type stuff now i'm just gonna rough in some ideas this isn't anatomically correct but but just to get those lines in to make it look kind of tendony I did that I would definitely have to make sure that I did my homework and got those all going the, the right ways for it to work properly. But that kind of is similar to a, a Hunden Fiend or like the uh, this Hellhound type version of creature that we have in Rebel Oak. So let's see. Kind of tendony like that. I don't know yet. I thought about making it like bright, like parrot type colors. 
but or uh, if it's in the uh, floating forest, it'd probably be more more uh, maybe some greens and yellows. With then like the tendony stuff underneath it being like the the reds. Yeah, I like the idea of that. Definitely making it seem using bright colors to make it almost almost seem like it's poisonous, and to warn warn things off of it. I'm just going to get some of these lines in quick just to get the idea across, but know that this isn't muscularly, it's not correct. Okay, let's go with Isaac's kind of scaly type thing, just to see what happens here. Maybe it's a scavenger, yeah, I could I could see that. More more vulture like in and how it gains its food. Picking on the remnants. I'm liking the texture under there okay. I mean, the little teeny circles, it's hard to really tell what's going on, but let's pop that up into the up into camera view. Whoop. So that's just kind of giving an idea of what it could look like. But this is, is such a small concept sketch. If I ever start veering off uh, off screen, just let me know. Sometimes I tend to pull my sketchbook closer towards me, and then away it goes. So I think, I think I'll start doing a, probably one day a week doing drawings. I think that'll be a good way to uh, make sure I get all my drawings in that I need to get in each month. And this has been fun doing this. I think maybe uh, I need to figure out my schedule. definitely be afternoons Eastern time. Because I do these sketch cards every month for people that, for some, some of pa my patron supporters. So I need to, uh, I think if I do those on stream, that would be an easy way to, to knock those out and get those done. And also a way for people, new people, to get to see what I'm working on. All right. Let's see. Just sharpening my pencil a little bit. 
think I'm just going to leave the top of this one be more fur-like. This one's just going to have a crazy mix of textures. Which I think is okay. Because I don't know if this one will actually make it to Revelo or not. We'll have to see. Let's throw a little bit of blue in here. Just to, just to brighten his day. A little swoosh of blue there. A little swoosh of blue around the eyes. A little in this horn. A little in this horn. A little in this horn. A little bit under this fur line here. Around this kind of skull weird skull looking shape. I'm not going to put any into the uh, here I'll put some. I'm not going to put any into the tenony parts. Put some down in here. That's definitely getting the uh, getting the the, the uh, lead of the pencil and pulling that in. I think I'll uh, do a little bit here and a little bit down here. And let's just kind of work that out, try and get this back to being clean and blue. And let's pull some of the brown in just for the tendony area. I don't think, I think it's going to be a little bit dark, but I'll just pull some down, go in some of the same directions that I've got some of these lines going. That just helps add a little bit to it. All right. So I think that's going to be it for today's adventure. Let me do actually. Let me do a little bit right here. For everybody that has tuned in today, thank you for joining me on my quest. In today's sketching adventure, we were exploring new creatures from the fantasy world Revelo. Um, we've got this guy who is definitely going to be sculpted Wednesday night at 9.30 on World Anvil's, uh, 9.30 Eastern Standard Time on World Anvil's channel. We've got two possible options that I'll probably do some sculpting on as well. Um, one of these two critters will probably get started most likely won't be finished. Hey Brian, and you're in Hong Kong now. I'm going to get some sleep. See you guys. It's been fun here. Also, may you check out the channel on YouTube. She does monster drawing a lot and mashup. Awesome. Very good. Have, have a good night, your time. Thanks for tuning in. Well, for everybody else that's watching along, thank you for joining today's quest. I hope to see you again soon. I'll give it just a moment. For the uh, for the delays, and all right, and goodbye.